Good morning, everybody. So a few days ago, I was on my way. I was Well, that's not true. I wasn't on my way. That was the problem. A few days ago, I was in my house. It was on Thursday, this past Thursday. So when people say stories, uh, a few days ago, and they really mean like six years ago, I actually mean a few days ago. Thursday morning, I uh, was in my home, and I got a phone call at 11.15 a.m. And I was supposed to apparently be somewhere teaching. Now, this is one of my biggest fears in life is to be late or miss a class. But this is what ended up happening. Someone calls and says, where are you? I said, I'm where I am. What, what, where are you? You know, I feel like being judged. I echo. You know, like, I don't know. Anyway, so he got it. He said, where are you? I said, what, what do you need? He said, well, you know you're supposed to be teaching a class at 11. So I look at my watch, and I see it's 11.15. So I said, oh, and I just, let me check my schedule. And they said, yeah, schedule has confirmed what you have just said. I said, listen, I, I'm really sorry. I'll be there in, and then you start, you know, when you say I'll be there in, and you say like five minutes, but really you mean an hour, right? So, so I don't have the luxury of seeing it because there was a group that was waiting for me. And then they had another teacher after, another teacher after. It just didn't work. Like I'll be there in an hour. So I made real time. I said, listen. I'll be there in 15 minutes, which is really not possible where I live. It just it wasn't possible. But, okay, it was better than saying, you know, five minutes. So I said, I'll be there in, like, 15 minutes. And then I, you know, the, the <laughs> I w went through my head when I found out that I messed up is uh, what every man, what goes through every man's head. And we learned it from Adam Arishon. What, what went through my head? It's my wife's fault. And my wife was sitting right there. And I get, I'm like, they're like, you know, you have a class at 11. I was like, I look at my wife. I'm like, and in my head, I'm thinking, why didn't you tell me? You know, and I'm like, wait a minute. It's not her responsibility. So I actually didn't say it. But I said, I was thinking to say, why didn't you tell me? So now I could say it without having, I didn't mean, I was just thinking it, you know. But I go ahead. I'm like, oh, man. I. And the next stage, I'm like, how am I going to get there in time? How am I going to get there? I had to get to H. I was, I was in French. Whatever. It just didn't, it's like, it just doesn't make sense. I'm going to get there in time. There's no way I'm getting there in time. It's already 15 minutes late. But how am I going to get there with, you know, salvaging something? So then I try to maybe hint to my wife to give me a ride. You know, because, like, it's her fault I'm late. You know what I mean? So, like, I, at the least she can do, you know, at least in my head. <laughs> so I was like, oh, how am I going to get there? She goes, take a cab. I go, I understand, but, but how am I going to get there? Like, how am I going to get to where I need to go? She goes, take a cab. I, I understand. I heard you. I'm just, how am I going to get there? You know? She's like, take a. I'm like, all right, fine. You know? I call a cab. I say, you know, I can't. Bye, Lord. You know? So I said, I said, monit miad. You know? I said, okay, come to court. I said, no, no, but how many? I said, listen, four minutes for real? Or like I said, 15 minutes? Like, really? How much time are you going to be here in? I said, they'll be there. Okay, now I'm thinking, um, this is like bad. I get into the cab, and he starts driving quite leisurely. So I said to him, listen, I have a class at 11 o'clock. The guy looks at his watch. He goes, PM? Like, wh what do you mean? I said, listen, I, I don't think I understand. I have a class at 11 o'clock a.m. He's like, it's 11.20. I said, hint, hint, drive faster, you know? And then we get to a point, basically, you can go right or left. I, 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 chose, the, I chose the wrong one, and I, I said it was his fault. And the kids are, I called someone else to get. And on the way there, I said to the guy, you know what? I'm trying to just relax myself. And I have a lot of things running through my head. A lot of things running through my head. Has anyone here ever been late to something? Yes? And uh, no? Yeah, I'm in a room of women. Of course not. Because when you get there, that's the time, right? Anyway, so <laughs> we have another way. Mitzvah Seisha Swan Groma, guys. Anyway, so, so I go out and you've been late to something and people are waiting for you. It's not just like you're late. And, and if you miss it, you miss it. And, and they came for, this is like a group that came from America for one hour. You know, No, they came for two hours. But I, I basically, it's bad if I miss it. I ended up working it out by messing someone else over, saying I can't teach him, whatever. But but point is that I'm anxious, I'm nervous, I'm thinking, oh no, what's going to be? I'm late, and okay, what's going to be anyway? Like nothing's going to be. Everything's fine. It's no problem really, other than I mess someone over. Okay, life goes on. It happens. But I'm thinking, I'm anxious, I'm nervous, and I said to myself, you know what? I remember I got, 
uh, for all the things we say not good about WhatsApp and uh, technology and whatever, I, I got a, a WhatsApp a few months ago. And this WhatsApp that I got a few months ago, it's, it's, I get a lot of these things in my neighborhood. I live in, a, in a, a neighborhood where there's like a WhatsApp group for the neighborhood, and it's mainly Israelis, so everything's in Hebrew. So what do I do? Like everything I get in Hebrew. When I get a Hebrew letter, I just open the drawer, and I put it in, and I close it, and I hope it's not important. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else have a drawer like that? It might be. Uh, so anyway, so I have that drawer. So I have the same thing on this WhatsApp thing. I read Hebrew. I just kind of like pull down and pretend like I'm reading because my kids are watching and they speak Hebrew. So they're like, oh, it must be Tati speaks Hebrew. He's looking. I'm like, oh, yes. Oh, interesting. Oh, very good. Okay, away now. And uh, But I caught my eye, an amazing line. And this is what I want to bring out today. Just an amazing concept, which really changed my life, and uh, in a positive way. Sometimes it's negative. This is positive. Now, the truth is only if you think about it. A lot of things can change your life, and a lot of things have changed your lives. And the question is, though, are we thinking about it, or it's like in and out? So here was the line, and I said it to the cab driver. I said, you know, there are two things in life that a person should never worry about. Two things in life you should never worry about. So, Israeli cab driver, right away, of course he has the answers. He goes, Parnasa, you know, a livelihood. I said, oh, okay, and what's the second? He said, no, what's the second? I said, that wasn't the first either. So let's, let's take it back, yeah? Two things in life a person should never worry about. I know this is probably not set up in such a form. You'll excuse me for being a teacher. What are they? Okay, when one will go and this one will die. Okay, that, that is very morbid, and it's... It's also perhaps true, although the mistress is maybe we should be worried about that, but okay, that's good, that's good, we shouldn't be too, anyone else, what should we never worry about, yeah? Oh, nice, I, I think, did you hear another class of mine once, that sounds, anyway, so good, that's, uh, if I was giving that class, I would say that, but we're in a different class now, there's two other things, okay? Two things a person should never worry. You know when someone goes, the most important thing is, and then they say, the next talk, the most important thing. I thought you said that last week. Oh, that was Hanukkah. Now we're on Purim. All right, okay. What are the two things a person should never worry about? Yeah. The weather. Okay, good. These are all great answers, but another answer I want to share with you. They're all wonderful, but another two are the following. Number one, and you know what? The weather works. The death thing actually works. The, the, all these work, and they're all true. They're all accurate, and they fit into what I'm about to say. There are two things you should never worry about. Number one, you should never worry about something that you can change. Guess what number two is? Number two is you should never worry about something that you cannot change. So in other words, what should you worry about? Nothing. So everybody get that. Now, I could have started with that and say, don't worry about anything. You'd be like, oh, sure. Everything's great now. Thank you for that piece of advice. But it's very different if you word it differently. Two things. Only two things. That's it. Just two things. Number one. I don't like the thumb one. Number one. It just doesn't work with me. Number one. Never worry about something that you can change. Because simply put, if you can change it, then change it. That's it. What are you worrying about? it? If you could change it, then change it. Oh, and by the way, you know what else? Things you can't change. See, simply because if you can't change it, then you can't change it anyway. What are you going to gain by worrying? Does everybody hear this? You can't change it anyway. What are you going to gain by worrying? Now, obviously, and maybe it's not so obvious, right? But I think it's obvious. It's almost like a silly statement. Shkoya, I should never, ever worry. It's like getting up and saying, Amuna. Everyone, you have a hard time? Amuna. Thank you. Amuna. Now I'm better. Amuna. The answer is Amuna. The answer is don't worry. But how do we make it real? How do we make it that it's practical? How do we make it to a point that actually we can get to that level of there's two things that a person should never worry about? Now understand, the Mishnah tells us in Perk Yavos, it's the Mishnah found in Perk Dalid Mishnah Chav Gimel, or Shimon Ben Elazar Omer, Shemalaza says very interestingly, because you know, what's the, what's the worst thing you could say to somebody when they're very upset or angry? Gamzu Latova. Okay, we're going to get to that in a minute. That's coming up in a minute. That said in the next statement to the Mishnah, we'll see. Let's start with anger first. Someone gets, they're very angry. I can't believe it. Ha, I'm angry. Uh, what do we say? What do you say to them? Calm down, calm down, right? That's the best thing. Don't you love when people say that? You're like, I can't even, someone's like, calm down. You're like, 
You know what? I never thought about it like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I guess I will. I'll calm down now. Thank you. Uh, come on. Seriously? Now let's go to the next statement of the mission, which you just mentioned. A person goes to visit someone at a shiva house. What is the worst thing you could say to them? Gamzulatova. Uh, we out of our minds. Uh, someone just lost a loved one. You're like, you know, there's a plan. Shem loves you. Gamzulatova. Gamzulatova. Gamzu. All the gamzus. Are you, are we crazy? Is it true that it's Gamzulatova? Is it true? Is it true the person who's angry should calm down? Are we dealing with the person that can hear truth right now? Says the Mishnah further, when a person goes out and they're going to make a net there, don't try to understand what they mean because there's different ways of a person making a net there of a vow that you can get out of. You can do a forest in the Durham. If a person says, that's it. I'm never eating cake again. I'm so fat. I just want to make that clear. Someone says, I'm, never, I'm so fat. No more cake. Blue nether. A person should never go to them and say, well, what do you mean by cake? Like, what kind of cake do you mean? Do you mean, like, chocolate, vanilla, ice creams, raspberry, strawberry, fudge? What do you mean, cake? All types of... You see, because in Ilchus Nidarim, in the laws of vows, if somebody makes a vow, they can get out of a vow as long as they didn't lock themselves into the vow. What does that mean? If a person says, I'm never going to do something... And then afterwards, they realize, oh my goodness, why did I say that? There's an event this morning with food. How could I have done that? And then they go and they're like, Rabbi, I need help. What would you do? I made a vow. Okay, what did you say? I said, I'm not even cake again. What kind of cake did you mean? I didn't really think about it. I just said cake. Well, did you mean chocolate? I'm not specifically. Did you mean vanilla? No, I don't think that either. I mean, so what did you mean? I didn't really mean anything. I just felt fat. You know, that's it. Yeah. Then we could say, I first the dark. You can get yourself out of it because you didn't really lock yourself in. But if somebody said specifically, I will never have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, then we've got a problem. Then we've got a problem. And you can't do a first and You can't get out of it. There's a way of locking yourself in. You can't get out of it. So never say to a person who's making a vow, or oh, what kind of cake? Because that will totally mess them over. When someone is angry, you never say calm down. When someone's dead is lying before them, don't try to comfort them. When someone is making a vow, do not ask them what they mean. Everybody get what's going on here? We're dealing in very high emotional circumstances. And when a person is in a very high level emotional circumstance, you've got to react in turn. And that is understand where they're coming from, take a step back, and just, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. Yes, it's hard, it's difficult. Oh, I'm also fat, but I'm still eating cake. And whatever it is, let me go through. But we have to understand, never go ahead and do that. Why? What will happen? You're going to mess them over. So let's go with the concept. So I say to you, ready? Two things in life you should never worry about. Those you can change, and those that you can change, they can't. When do, when do I say that? Do they say that to you when you're upset and you're frustrated and you're in the circumstance? That's the same thing as saying to somebody when they go ahead and they lost a loved one, uh, Gamzul Tov. Or someone's angry, calm down. Right now is not the time. Right now is clearly not the time to talk about this. The time to talk about it is when it has nothing to do with high-stakes emotional situations. So then when do we say it? And when do we learn it and when do we get it? So this, my friends, is where things get quite interesting. We understand now we're starting, we're coming up to this beautiful holiday of Hanukkah. And uh, there's an interesting uh, halacha that we have in Hanukkah. There's a halacha that one has to do something every night. What do we do every night? L light candles, light menorah. What, 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 Brachos, okay. Eat fried food, thank you. That's what we're talking about. So the answer, okay, so not that, but yeah, we do that also. There's a mitzvah, there's a mitzvah to go ahead and do something on Hanukkah, and it's reminiscent of something which we did in the Beis HaMikdash, one of the avodas, one of the services that was done in the Beis HaMikdash. What is it? I'm hearing lighting the menorah. Is that what everyone's saying? Lighting the menorah. So interestingly, the Rambam brings down in Hilchos Bias HaMikdash, chapter 9, Halacha 7, says the following idea. That uh, it's based on the Gemara and Yuma. The Gemara and Yuma and Chavdal and Rebbe says, Hadlaka lav avodahi. Lighting the menorah is not part of the avoda. 
What do you mean of luck alav avodi? That's the, what we do. What do we do in Chanukah? We light the menorah because lighting the menorah is what it's all about, and the miracle of the oil and the fire, and, the, and that's what we do, right? And it's reminiscent of the Beis Hamikdash where we wrote, we, we we lit the menorah. Here it's a Chanukah. Yeah, there's a menorah. We light the menorah because of the avod of the menorah. But you know what the Rambam says before ish that there is no avoda of adlaka. Adlaka is not the avoda. Adlaka, the lighting, is not the service. What is the service? Hatavas haneros. Preparing the candles. Preparing the candles is the avoda. The avoda isn't the actual lighting. The avoda is the prep work. All of life is prep. If you do not prep, you've got nothing. All of life is prep. Like we know, a very famous Chazal say, and we get reminded of this every single week, every single week. What are we reminded of every single week? What? Shabbos. What are we, but that's what we, it is every week. What are we reminded of every week with Shabbos? Preparing for? Olam Abba. Anyone who prepares on Friday will have what to eat on Shabbos. Anyone who prepares on Friday will have what to eat on Shabbos. Anyone who does the prep work will have what to eat on Shabbos. Are we prepping? Are we preparing? I'm not talking about my butt right now. I'm talking about it here, right now. Our life circumstances, are we preparing? There are two things a person should never worry about. Those things you could change and those that you can't change. If you could change it, then do it. If you can't, you can't anyway. So just accept and move forward. What? How do I get to that level of where I could live with that in the circumstance? Prep. We've got to prep ourselves. The menorah teaches us every single day. Prep it. Prep it. Prep it. Now, you'll excuse me for not being such a professional here, and this is totally unprofessional I'm going to do now. You could fill in the blanks and help me. I heard a story a, new, a number of years ago. I, I just don't remember who the rabbis were. Excuse me. But, and I know if I would say who they are, someone would be like, actually, it was the other rabbi. Right? So fill in the blank with the rabbis, all right? There were two very holy rabbis. And these two holy rabbis, they were so holy, I can't even say their names. They're so holy. These two holy rabbis. We'll call them Holy A and Holy B. Now, Holy A was on a higher level than Holy B, and he was considered the rabbi. And underneath him, I have some names. I don't want to say them because I'm nervous. I'm going to say the wrong ones. You'll fill it in after. So there was, uh, these two rabbis were traveling together, and when they were traveling together, traveling together, ah, Rabbi B says to Rabbi A, Holy Rabbi A. Oh, what happened was they ended up in a town. They ended up in a town. I forgot the town part, right? Because every story is to have a town. They ended up in a town. Far, far away. And there was a king. There's no king. It's just, you know, it's part of the Jewish thing. Anyway, so these two rabbis are going. I heard from one of my friends, every rabbi, some of his sitting there, he said, every rabbi goes to the same rabbi school. Every mushal that's ever given in Judaism has two things. Number one is there's a king. And number two, the rabbi is trained to repeat the word king in a high pitch the next time he says it. Once upon a time, there was a king. A king! <laughs> anyway, nothing to do with this. There were two rabbis. And these two rabbis came to a community. When they got to the community, there was someone there that was having a bris. They were having, they just had their beautiful baby. It was the, the night before the bris. And they heard these two rabbis coming. Holy rabbis, how honored it would be if you guys, could, you guys, if the holy rabbis can participate in the bris. Yes, of course. So they went to their inn. And when they were in the inn, Rabbi B says to Rabbi A, Rabbi A, it's a little bit not fair. You know, everywhere we go, you're greater than me. It is what it is. And when we go to get kibudim, you get honor. It's just not fair because you always get the higher honor than I get. And, and like, I would like it if maybe I can get the higher honor. It's just not fair. Can I get the higher honor? He says, absolutely. What, what, what do you want? He goes, I would love to be the sandik. You know, let me be the sandik. And you'll do amida lebrachos or amida l'shem. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me, let me, let me, let me have a sandik. He says, you know what? You're right. You deserve it. You're wonderful. Okay. So the Rabbi A goes to sleep. But Rabbi B is so ready. He's getting ready. He's so excited for tomorrow. He's going to be the Sandik. He goes to the mikvah and he starts learning Torah and he writes a Torah and he goes to a 
to another person in the meantime, and he is just, mom is getting into it, excited. Comes the morning of, comes the morning of, and they say, Sandik! Rabbi A gets up and sits in the chair. And Rabbi B was like, Maha? What the? Vos? Look, what's going on over here? He doesn't say anything. It's in public. He says, okay, leaves it. My hi, what's going on? They finish the bris. He's this, he's that. They finish. He goes, Rabbi, I don't understand. I thought we had a deal. I was going to be the Sandik. You were going to be the thing. So Rabbi A turns back to Rabbi B. He says, I don't understand you. You got to go ahead and stay up all night learning mikvah, growth, connection, prep, over and over. You got so much. Can't I get a little something also? Just not fair. Come on. Now, it sounds a little bit silly, but if you think about it, being the person who just sits down and holds the baby, that's big stuff. We speak of a sound it's big stuff. But a person who works on themselves and starts getting themselves ready and grows, who gains more? Prep is life. Life is prep. The only way we're able to succeed in anything is if we go ahead and we prepare ourselves. There are two things that a person will never, two things, this is it, two things you should never worry about, what you can fix and what you can't fix. But if you think about that in the case, it's going to be very hard. We know there's a point of no return. When a person starts to feel themselves getting upset or angry or anxious or jealous or whatever it is, and it starts to build, and it gets to a point where you start thinking to yourself, you know what, I should really, oh my God, uh, and then we go over that point and we're like, I really shouldn't do what I'm about to do. Has anyone ever said that to themselves? I really shouldn't, one of you. Okay, the rest of you don't say it, you just do it. <laughs> I really shouldn't do it. The truth is, many of us don't even say it, we just do it, because we're not even thinking at all. Those who've worked on themselves get to the point where they realize they're about to do something they shouldn't do, and they say, I really shouldn't do what I'm about to do. And about 30 seconds later, they say, I really shouldn't have done what I just did. Right? Because we go ahead and we, we fall. We, we're there. It's this cognitive dissonance where we understand, but we fall to it and we break. But what if you can grab it before? What if you can go ahead and right before the point of no return, right before that point, you say to yourself, hold on, hold on one second. There are two things that a person should never worry about. Before you hit that point, you're not in the state of anger, the dead person in front of a vow. You're right before that point. You're not feeling good. You ate too much. You're like, ah, you know what? It's okay. I could not eat next time this much. I can go ahead and do something differently. By the way, I'm not even going to discuss this, but how many times is it that the, the reality is the things that we're angry about or that we're anxious about or that we're upset about or that we're scared of or whatever it is, how many times does it actually come to fruition? In, in other words, more often than not, the thing we're worried about doesn't happen and something else happens that you didn't have time to even worry about. Right? We have things that happen to us. I mean, I, I take a look. Recently, I was a little bit sick. And, and, and okay, a lot. And anyway, so, so I, I was sick. I had no idea. I had no time for prep. It was like I was fine. And then within an hour, bam, I was in the hospital. It was just like out of nowhere. It was out of nowhere with nothing. Like it was an illness. But uh, Baruch Hashem, uh, we're moving on. But, but what I'm saying is, is that I had no time to prep for that. I worried about many other things. And those other things had nothing to do with me. And then this thing happens. I wasn't even ready for it. So what are we worrying about? This happens to be also a beautiful, beautiful idea that Gemara brings down in Sanhedrin on page 100b. Kuf Ahmed Beis. If you have the art scroll, 100b, 2. Now, it says the following statement. The Gemara is discussing something known as Sfarim Chitsonium. Sfarim Chitsonium mean outside books. Outside books. There is a prohibition for one to read outside books. question is, what are outside books? What does that mean? So just very loosely understood without going through the whole Gemara, it basically is generally understood to be books that are heretical, books of heresy, uh, polytheistic. Let me make that clear for those who are unfamiliar with the uh, ancient terminology here that I'm used to using. Um, kfira, things that are Avodah Zarah, ideas that are going to take you away from the Rebona Shalom. This is something which is, you're not allowed to do. And if you do, it's bad news. You're not allowed to be involved in Storm Chitonium. The question is, what falls into the, that category? The Gemara discusses that there's one book where it goes to the discussion called Ben Sira. There's a fellow named Ben Sira who wrote a book. Lots of history about that. Not for now. But Ben Sira, truth is, it would be for now. But I don't know the time to go into that. Ben Sira goes along and he writes his book. 
And, and the, they say, you're not allowed to do that, like Ben Sira. I say, well, why not? What's the problem with reading Ben Sira? There's a lot of statements and anecdotes and ideas. And the Gemara goes back and forth and explains. You can't say this. Well, why not this? Well, what's the problem? That's the same as a Pasuk in Devarim. You can't do this. Well, why? That's like Shlomo Melech says. Well, you can't do this. Why? That's like David Melech says. And it goes back and forth. So finally, it gives a reason why you can't read it or you shouldn't be reading it. But then it goes through lines you are allowed to read. Ideas you're allowed to learn. And I'll read to you the quote that he says. The Gemara says, quoting Ben Sira, Al Tetzar Tsaras Machar, do not be worried or pained about the afflictions or pain of tomorrow. Kilo Teda Ma Yom. You have no idea what the day is going to bring. It gets more intense now. Shema Lemachar Einenu. Maybe tomorrow. Einenu. What does that mean, Einenu? Says Rashi, you'll be dead. Einenu, we won't be there. Mashal explains why is he speaking in third person, because it shouldn't be a God forbid a curse. Venimsa mitstar al olam sheno shalo. And you find that you just were worried about a world that doesn't belong to you. What are you worrying about? You have no idea this is actually going to come to fruition in the first place. Now, I want to be clear, because some people like to say, like, okay, fine, so I'll just live my life and throw everything into the wind. Everything will be totally fine. Why don't I just throw my burden on God, and he'll take care of me anyway. Okay, so what are we saying? That would be very good if you get to a point like that. But what do you mean? Just forget everything. A person's allowed to plan. Nobody said you can't plan. Nobody said you can't live a life of working things through of how we should be doing certain things. But where does the worry come in? What are you worried about? Who knows what will be? This morning I had a conversation with my wife. I, I said, uh, can, do you know where this particular file is? She goes, last time I saw it, it was downstairs. I said, okay, can you just, can you get me the file? Because of course it's, okay, it's my fault this time. Okay. I said, can you get me the file? She says, well, what if it's not there? I said, if it's not there, then we'll look somewhere else. Uh, then we'll deal with it when it's not, can we deal with it? If, when we, first, let's see if it's there. Yeah. She came back. It was there. So I said, so you have the file? She goes, yeah. I'm like, well, were you worried about it? She goes, what are you talking about? I'm like, okay, right, here we go. Now we're not even talking about it anymore, right? What happens is, what are you worried about that? Maybe it's not going to come out. And by the way, if it does, then you'll deal with it then. You'll deal with it then. But the bottom line is it's got to be prep. This is why it's brought down in Allah. It's brought down in Allah. I believe it's found in Simon Rish Lamed. It's Allah that a person should accustom themselves to say, Gamzu Tova. This too is for the best. Again, not to someone, God forbid, who's, who's, who's dying. I once heard a line. I don't know where I heard it, and I, I hope it's not the Ben Sira stuff you're not allowed to learn. But, but I, I, once, I once heard a line that when a person themselves is going through some sort of personal tragedy or suffering, emuna. When somebody else is going through some sort of tragedy, kfira. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, you don't go to someone, when you're suffering, God forbid, if someone themselves has suffered in the past or they're suffering, they have to say, they have to understand, Amuna, Hashem knows what's best, and we get it, and, and there's a plan, and Gamzul Tova, Kol Madarech Mala Tava, but everything is good, everything's wonderful, everything's great. But if someone else is suffering, we're meant to look at them in a way like there's no God in the world, how could this be happening? Like as if, I'm so sorry, this, this is crazy, as if there is none. The way we deal with somebody else, to be for there, right? To really be there for them. But for ourselves, to recognize, prep, Gamzul Tova, I said to my son, Thursday also. Thursday was a big day. No, no, it was Friday. It was Friday. It was Friday. 11.15. It was 11.15 a.m. It was 24 hours after the first story. 11.15. How do I know? Because my wife was going to pick up the kids at school, and she was making cookies. Someone said, a baby. Friday, 11.15. My son decides to help. So he's opened the things up. I said, okay, you know, get me the flower. So he brings the flower. And I said, okay. And he's like, all right, when you say get the flower, it must mean take everything else out also. So he starts taking something else out, and he takes out half a bag of sugar. We don't have half a bag of sugar there. Well, now we do, because the other half was there still. In other words, when he pulled it, it got ripped on something, and half the bag just spilled out into this cabinet, which you have to, like, get into, you know, whatever. So I said, uh, he goes, oh, here's the sugar. I said, where's the rest of it? You know, where's the rest? He goes, I don't know. You know? <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Gamzu Latova. I said, Gamzu Latova. And then I, I, and I wonder, I say this all the time. I'm speaking to my kids about this. I wonder, do they even know what it means? I said to my son, he's three. 
I said, I said, Yona, what is Gamzula Tova? He said, Gamzula Tova means oy vey. <laughs> I was like, oy vey? That you think it means oy vey? You know? In other words, it's just another way of saying it. Because when you grow up hearing it over and over, someone bangs their leg, Gamzula Tova, that must be oy vey. You know, so that's what it means. The next one up, my daughter above that, I think she got a little bit more. She, again, we bring, educate our children young. And, and, and okay, Gamzul Tov is a thing which I like to speak about all the time. I like to talk about it. I like to speak about it. It's halacha. I like to do mekayim some halachas. Even all of them, I like to in theory. So we go, we say, Gamzul Tov, Gamzul Tov, Gamzul Tov. So my daughter, she'll come to me sometimes. She like banged her leg once. I'm like, oh no, you banged your leg? She goes, yeah, but Gamzul Tov. She goes, you know, Tati, even if I would have broke my leg, Gamzul Tov, Right? And I'm like, what? <laughs> she goes, everything's, got, everything's good. This too is for the best, right? I said, yeah, we just hope that doesn't happen. I brought her a watch recently home from uh, the States. It was about a week ago. Everything is this week. And I, I brought her a uh, this watch. And uh, she came home the day we gave her the watch. And it's not on anymore. She doesn't have it. So I'm like, where's your watch? She goes, <gasps> I'm like, where's, where's the watch? Goes, <gasps> she goes, maybe it's in the car. Maybe it's in my, maybe it's in my shirt. You know, she's like checking everywhere. Whatever. She's, uh, she's little. She's 21. And uh, I'm kidding. She's a little younger. But she, she goes ahead and she's looking. She's looking. I said, oh, okay. Like, maybe you lost it. She goes, she goes yeah, I guess. Um, Gamzulatova. Batati. It comes to the Tova, but I'm sad. I said, yeah, okay, you know, but is it good? She goes, yeah, I guess it's good. Can we get another one? I said, it's a good question, but... Okay, you're going to call me really sick, but excuse me for the therapy I'm about to cause my daughter to... But I said, but what if there's no more in the world? What if there are no more watches? She goes, there's no more watches? I said, I didn't say that, but what if there are none? She said, I guess Gamzula Tova. But really, are there no more? I said, I'm afraid there are no more. So I'm just kidding. I didn't say that part. But I said, yeah, we can find it, whatever. Takashi found it. We got it. Fine, beautiful. Where was it? In her bag. Okay. But prep, saying it over and over, getting into a mode where you're constantly on your mind. That comes from what? Ultimately, if you want to keep going in deeper and deeper, obviously it comes down to the idea that Hashem runs the world, and Hashem knows what's best, and everything is happening for a reason, everything is really good. But then when somebody asks the question, well, what are you going to say for a person who goes ahead and their spouse is, is sick with a terminal illness or they passed away, you're going to tell them also that? The answer is, of course I'm not going to say that to them. There's nothing to say to them. Of course I'm not going to say that, because they're in a, in a very hard, difficult state. So what would I say to them? Nothing. What would I have said to them? If I would have met them before it happened, prepare. Prep yourself. Prep yourself. There was recently, and by recently I don't mean now the last week, it was about four months ago. There was in the Chachmas Bagoyim Tamin, but this isn't Chachma and but it's with going this. There was a fight in the in the in the non-Jewish world, a boxing fight. And there's a fellow there who's a pretty, pretty decent fighter, apparently, in the world. His name, uh, they call him, I think, I call him the Mayflower. His name is like Mayweather. Th this guy, Mayweather, he's fought from a bunch of years. His record is 50 and 0. He's never lost a fight. He's never lost a fight. He was 49 and 0. He was retired, but he came out of retirement to fight some other guy. And Nebuch, he won, but he only won 400 million. Nebuch. Okay, I think it'll be okay. And this guy never, ever, ever lost a fight. Does it mean he never lost a fight? The answer is he never lost a professional boxing fight. Did he train, though? As he grew up, did he train? Yes or no? Yes, of course he trained. Did he lose when he trained? He lost over and over and over. He got knocked out. He got knocked out. He got knocked down, but he got up again. He ain't never going to keep him down. He kept getting up. He got knocked down. He got up. He got knocked down. He got up. Of course we get knocked out over and over again. But then when the fight starts, he wins. Time and time again. Why? Prep. 
He prepped himself. There are two things a person should never worry about. He prepped himself over and over and over. If I were to walk into the rink with this guy, would I win? Of course not. I'd get demolished. Why? Because I never did anything. A person who goes through a hard thing in life, you go through a challenge in life, are you going to win? The answer is, of course not. Unless you prep. What about if you prep? Will you win? Maybe. If you prep hard enough, definitely. And when one goes through the hard times and they're going through the challenges, you meet people like this sometimes. You meet people that go through the challenges of challenges. And you're like, how are they so, how are they able to handle this? How are they able to do this? It doesn't make any sense. I don't even get it. What's going on over here? They are superhuman. The answer is, no, they're not. They're the same as you. The only difference is that when things were going well, they prepped themselves to recognize God's hand in the world, to see how wonderful Shem is and what he does for us, the miracles, unbelievable, over and over, daily. Moda'ani lefanecha. And when they said moda'ani, they meant it, and they paid attention. They weren't drooling all over saying, uh, uh, ma, did I say moda'ani? Where am I? Right? They didn't say, uh, but they said, moda'ani kol boker, moda'ani lefanecha, moda'ani lefanecha, over and over, melech ha'olam, melech ha'olam, ve'afilu ba'makom achin amuch ba'olam u'kayam, something which understood, ve'afilu ba'makom achin amuch sheyesh, hu mechayet kulam, understand that Hashem is there, lehodu sila'alel, what do we do in Hanukkah? We are moda' and we sing praises, we say Hashem, yes, thank you, you're wonderful, you're great. Are we saying hallel? Are we paying attention? Yeah, can we get that? Oh, do you know what we're saying? We're listening to the words. Pay attention to the words over and over through our tefillahs. We're thinking Hashem, we're recognizing Hashem, but are we paying attention to it? If we'd be paying attention to it, you'd be totally fortified that no matter what comes your way, by the way, there's two things in life a person should never worry about. And when the thing hits, when you get in the rink and comes this guy against you or whatever life is going to throw at you, you say to them, there's two things in life you never worry about because you've prepped it over and over again. Let's put this all together. I'll end off just one point, and then i got to get out of here. Here we go. So we saw from the beginning of the we put the story. What happened? I was late. I blame my wife, of course. And I sent a copy to the cab driver. There's two things in life you never worry about. Parnasa. No, that's not it. Worry about Parnasa. But rather what it's about is what, what you can change, what you can't change. Death is one idea. We talk about an idea. All the things about the results of what's going to happen over here. And I was going to put it. All these are accurate. All the, and the weather. All these things are true. All these things are actually true. What we're saying over here, the bottom line is what put things you never worry about. Those you can change, those you can't. If you can change, change it. If you can't, can't change anything. We're going to do about it. Right? Get rid of the files. not there. If it's not there. So then we'll check afterwards. Bottom line is work your life. Do what you got to do, people. Do what you got to do. Just live your life. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, wonderful. Someone goes out there angry. Calm down, sir. I never thought about it like that. Of course, that's not going to help. But if a person presents himself, a person's dying. Oh, comes a little tough. What are we, crazy? A person goes out and oh, I'm never eating cake again. Which type of cake do you mean? You mean chocolate cake, vanilla cake, strawberry cake? What is it going to go to a shortcake? And so they're crazy. Of course, they're going to be such a thing. Don't even say such a thing. Because on a high level intensity, you just go to prep yourself. In law, prep is everything. Prep is everything. The mitzvah of Adlokas Neros is beautiful and wonderful, but that wasn't the avoda. The avoda is Atovas and Neros. And that's preparing the Neros and getting them ready. And every night, we do that. We prepare it, and we prepare it, and we prepare it. And every week, what do we do? I don't know if anyone here lights candles, but a lot of times we have, like, let's say, your husbands will go ahead and prepare them beforehand, right? That doesn't mean that they like a lot of stuff not to miss it. Of course it is. Is your own mitzvah, even a lot of is a mitzvah, but the prep is where it's at, peeps. When a person is going and putting it in and getting a concept where they're prepping and they're prepping and they're prepping, and Mayweather comes in and the Mayflower, forget about it. You got Americana, oh Spucci doesn't stand a chance. You get up there and you knock the thing over before you even get off their feet. Columbus wasn't Jewish, all the thing he maybe was. Realize what's really happening over here is that that was life is coming along. You do not prep, you're going down. God no, it's not oy vey. Gamzul Tova is this too is for the best. Yes, it's oh no, but Gamzul Tova, there are no more watches in the world. But realize that a person who starts to recognize this concept, realize the fact that what do we say? I'll take the Tazmacha, like we said to the Gemara in 100b. person shouldn't go ahead and be worried about tomorrow because then you're worried about the world. That doesn't belong to you. Who knows if you're going to be here? Who even knows you're going to be here? It's a beautiful poem that my Chavusa just shared with me. It's a poem that's found the Ibn Ezra, my Chavusa of Shimon Kaufman. It's beautiful. Ha'avar ayin. Ha'asid adayin. Ha'achshav keheref ayin. Imkain daga minayin. For those who don't speak Hebrew, all I did was pause intermittently and say random words. I will now translate. The past is not here anymore. The future is yet to come. The now is the blink of an eye. Where does worry come from? You're going to worry about the past? It's gone. Worry about the future? It's not here yet. 
You can wear it now. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. If there was a recording, I'd just keep going, it's over, 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 Pfft, right? And then what happens, we realize, right? oh, we could do it with the video, though. Yeah, it's like, eh. but it was, it's over. So what are we worried about? And I'll end with this idea. We'll end with this idea. And when I say end, I mean like the rabbi end. <laughs> you know the rabbi say, end will end with this. <laughs> I will end with this. You should know they're not saying E-N-D. They're not saying I will end E-N-D. They're saying A-N-D. And they will end. And I'd like to share with you something. And another thing. So I will end with this and then end with something else. The end I want to share with you is Rabbi Akiva. Everyone knows Rabbi Akiva. What a weird statement. Rabbi Akiva is dying. He's literally, literally dying. Not figuratively. People here have gone through pain. How many people here have been raked their skin off to death? Anyone? No? Okay. Dying, he's saying Shema Yisrael. Know that there is. He's dying. He's saying Shema Adkan Rabbi Akiva. He's in a state of simcha. He says to them, "What? All my life I've been waiting for. I've been praying for. What are they going to rake my skin off as I'm dying? One day, every day, he pictured himself. When will I be able to live? Bechol nafshecha. When will I be able to live?" Giving over everything to Hashem. I got the hard thing. I got the I got the kinds of I got the I got that. I got But with all my money, all my means. Interesting. I think it goes in order. All of your heart, all of your soul, all of your money. I think it's an order of challenges, right? God, I'll give you my heart. I'll give you my soul, but don't touch my bank account, right? Understand? But he says, I got it. Take my heart. Take my bank. When am I going to give you my soul? And every time he said Shema, he would envision himself giving himself to Hashem. Hey, guess what had happened? What happened? He was in a state of Simcha. He was in a state of Simcha. He said, we got it. I've been waiting for this. Prep work. Prep work. Prep work. How much are we preparing? The time to prepare is now. Not when, God forbid, we're in a challenge. We should never know any challenges. I mean, we should be rich. That was a big one. I like that. We should never do challenges. Amen. We should be rich. Amen. Yeah, hey, Shemay. Okay. We should never do any challenges. When I said, unfortunately, that's the way the world is, and it's fortunate. It's a whole other discussion, which we'll probably never have. But realize that when we go and we have them, we dive in Hashem. Please, don't give me challenges. But if I do, give me the ability to overcome those challenges. We say that every single morning, but are we paying attention? Are we saying modani? And are we benching us on us? Are we saying Hashem Are we paying attention to the words? Are we listening to what we're saying? God willing, with Hashem's help, inshallah, only with Hashem's help. Now it's a Shwaki song, I could say it. Inshallah, only with Hashem's help, Be'ezah Hashem, we will be able to slowly but surely start putting that into our lives. Slowly but surely etch away, slowly but surely etch away at this lack of understanding, of connection, of commitment with Hashem. Slowly but surely inculcate that into the way that we see. There's so much more I don't want to say now, but it's not fair because I'm already way over time. But slowly but surely, then God willing, God willing, it should never happen. But you know, there are two things a person should never worry about. Things that you can change and things that you can't change. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.